What's going on guys? So today we are out here at Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Corpus Christi, Texas. And we are gonna take a look at a very interesting Redwood fifth wheel. So this is a 2021 pre-owned unit. The model number on this specific unit is the 4001 LK. So if you wanted to go to a dealership and buy this thing brand new, you're gonna pay about 120 or between 120 and about $150,000, depending on how it's equipped, what dealership you're buying it from, and what savings they have in place. The MSRP on this unit's actually close to $180,000, but they're selling it here for much, much lower than that, for right under $90,000. So the question is, is buying a pre-owned RV, even if it's only a year old, maybe a year or two old, depending on when the, the previous owner actually purchased it, is it worth it? Is it worth saving, you know, upwards of thirty to $50,000 off of the price of a new one? We're gonna take a close look at this Redwood. We're gonna see the condition it's in, at least from the outside. We're gonna see specifically what's going on with this unit, and uh, we'll give you our opinion. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, let's start by taking a look at the numbers on this 2021 Redwood 4001 LK. So, this has a gross vehicle weight rating of 17,900 pounds, so it's relatively heavy, as are most Redwood fifth wheels. It's got a cargo capacity of 2,868 pounds, so it's a good amount of cargo capacity. You can definitely load this thing up. The dry weight is 14,972 pounds. It rides on twin 8,000 pound axles, and it has 17.5 inch H-rated tires. So the specs look really good. The axles look good, the tires look good, everything from an overall you know, build perspective. So we're gonna kind of work our way around this unit. First, we're gonna start with the inside. We're gonna check out the outside. And again, we're gonna look for how much wear and tear this unit actually has as a pre-owned 2021 model. And you can see it was manufactured in September 18th of 2020. All right, so let's work our way around. You got the Moride rubber pin box up front. This is gonna have the hydraulic level up uh, automatic leveling system. You have your Moride step above with the nice redwood cutout here on the steps. And you have this really kind of cool, you know, three-dimensional redwood logo there. And again, this is the 4001 LK. Stepping inside does not have a friction hinge door, but there's still a lot of your higher end RVs that I don't see with a friction hinge door. So that's kind of interesting. Um, it probably has a latch on the back or a magnet. It's got a magnet to hold it in place. A friction hinge plus a magnet I think is ideal. It's got a nice little grab bar. This does not look like it's factory installed. It looks like it may have been aftermarket, but I'm not really sure to be honest. It has a nice peephole that's been installed in the door. All right. So let's work our way through the inside of this unit and we'll come back out. Let's start at the back, which would be the kitchen. This is a rear kitchen mid living room unit. And then we'll work our way to the front. Okay, so it's new enough to have the Insignia upgraded four burner stove, residential stove. Plus it has a really nice real tile backsplash to it. Nice solid surface Corian countertops. Upgraded faucet, nice little straining rack that's over the single basin sink. It actually has two straining racks, so that's kind of interesting. Typically you only see one, but they've included two here, probably in lieu of having actual covers here. Got a good amount of storage underneath the sink. Nice soft closing cabinets below. Another nice soft closing magnetically latching cabinets. Really like the wood tones in here. A lot of really, really nice cabinetry, plus the uh, crown molding around the top and then the crown molding up here that really does a good job giving you contrasting tones. I love the vent hood above the stove. Very residential. And you can see the corner there it has little trim pieces in the corner for accents as well. Very nice. Love this back window and all this countertop space right here. So you could easily put a coffee maker, Instapot, you could put a Ninja, all sorts of different appliances right here on this back ledge that would then give you the ability to kind of cook and see what's going on outside. Got more cabinetry down here. More drawers right here. 
and these are not soft closing drawers. So the cabinets are soft closing cabinets, but the drawers aren't. I apologize if it's a little dark in here. Let me try to enhance that a little bit. That might work out a little better. All right, so got cabinetry up top, some more cabinetry here. You have a very interesting refrigerator. So this is an Insignia refrigerator, and you typically don't see the one with the dual trays down at the bottom in RVs. It looks like there's an ice making tray right here as well. Nice refrigerator, plus some storage above. Got more storage right here. Looks like a trash can spot. More drawers. And again, none of the drawers are soft closing, but all of the cabinets appear to be. And I've shown this unit in a previous video, you know, especially with all the really nice drawers behind cabinetry. Nice residential microwave. And this is also a convection microwave as well. And guys, I know on some videos that I go through, I may miss the word convection somewhere. I might say it's not a convection or it doesn't appear to be. You know, sometimes you do so many RV reviews and you go out, you just sometimes stumble across things and you miss it or overlook it. And I apologize for that. I try to get everything correct, but you know how it is. Okay, coming around to the mid living room portion, you can see you have your Thomas Paine theater seats right here. This is gonna have massage, heat, as well as some kind of ambient lighting. Over here, you're gonna have your fold-out sofa. So it looks like a love seat, but it's a little wider than the love seat. You could easily fit three people on here, and this is gonna fold out into roughly a queen-size bed. You have your panoramic fireplace. Again, while I'm doing this walkthrough, I'm also looking for any areas of wear and tear, things that look like they're excessive. You know, one area that a lot of people often complain about is how the headrests of the seats hold up. And I know it's only a year, maybe two years old, but these are things that sometimes happen. And I'm just trying to kind of view it as I walk through and give you the tour. This is gonna have a whisper quiet AC unit right here. It's gonna have a second one right here, and then it'll have a third one up front in the bedroom. And they're all spaced pretty close together. You can actually see the return air right there, here, and here. So they're all probably about six to eight feet apart. This is your dinette. Has kind of that, that rug style slide covering here. Very similar to if you would have gotten it with just, you know, no carpet, but it's a very durable material. It doesn't imprint like vinyl typically does, and it holds up real well. Nice comfy chairs here. You're probably gonna have two more chairs, likely up front or underneath the bed. Here's a little, little shelf here, plus a wireless charger. Insulated windows, so this has dual pane windows throughout, and I've made a lot of videos talking about the benefits of having dual pane windows. It really does make a huge difference in terms of how much radiant heat makes it into the RV. Nice blackout blinds, as well as some very, very nice solid wood balances. Nice lighting fixture above. Coming around this way, looks like a 50 inch TV in place, along with the sound bar mounted underneath it. You have some nice cabinetry up top, and these are all soft closing cabinets with magnetic holds. You have a little bit of discoloration right there. I'm not really seeing any more of it throughout here. That's usually not a water leak per se. Um, you know, sometimes it just kind of forms on this type of, of panel board. We have a couple spots on our RV in areas that don't have any contact with water or never will. Looking at the edge of the door right here, a little bit of wear and tear on the edge, but not much. This is a very residential style door in terms of how an interior door is constructed. Taking a look in the half bath, has a nice porcelain sink surround. Nice porcelain foot flush toilet. Medicine cabinet, as well as a lot of additional storage for toiletries and such. You have some storage right here when you walk in. Little closet. Looks like your vacuum accessories are there as well as in command, which is gonna control all your slides, your lighting, all of that good stuff. Then you have a power control system right here. This has the assisted entry steps as well, so the steps are a lot easier to lift up and down. This has a Corian style step which is kind of dirty, and I don't know if that's cleanable, but it may be. 
Okay, stepping up into the bedroom. King size bed. Love how they have the electric tilting backrest, which is really nice. It also gives you a little bit more space down here at the bottom whenever the slide is out, but it's also a great position to watch TV. Then again, you have your whisper quiet air conditioning ducts here. You have some really nice end tables over here. I'm not sure if you can see them or if it's too dark. Again, nice lighting throughout here. Looks like you have your wine guard booster up there. And then on this side, you have some more closet space. Nice little lift up area here for additional storage. More wardrobe down here. A lot of wardrobe in this unit, plus the TV's already mounted in place. Coming into the bathroom, beautiful surround. Same type of surround we have in our RV. I like how they trimmed it off here, and I love the shower fixture that they put in place. Again, this thing's only a year or two old, so you're gonna see a lot of the upgrades that you might expect in a brand new unit because, you know, a year ago, this pretty much was brand new. Porcelain foot flush toilet. Nice little chrome hinges there on the back. You have two sinks in here, his and hers. Nice mirrors above them. Medicine cabinet here. Lots of drawers, a lot of cabinet space as well. You have a little cord hanging down there. It was probably attached to the bottom. Then taking a look in the closet, see if I can turn anything on. Okay, so stepping in the closet, there's a spot for your stackable washer and dryer. You got your two additional chairs for the dinette. A lot of a lot of hangers so you have a lot of space to hang clothes in here this is a huge closet it's actually a full walk-in closet because i can get inside of the closet and look out and still see the door threshold so a lot of room in here very cool anyways let's take a look at the outside of this rv before i do that check out this wainscot they got going on here really really nice paneling it's just a very very nice luxurious rv and i can't see anything stand out that Looks as if it's in, you know, kind of crazy disrepair. But we'll take a look at the outside. Okay, starting from the front, working our way back. Again, the Moride rubber pin box. This thing has the spot for a generator if you're going to equip it here. Or it's also just a great storage spot if you're not going to throw a generator in. You could put a folding e-bike in here. You could put a little portable generator in here. It's just, again, it's a great storage location if you don't have a generator or you don't plan on equipping it with one. They were just out here putting brand new fresh Continental batteries in. Sometimes the batteries just die because it's sitting out and they have it powered on or it's just not being uh, charged and maintained the way that the battery should, but that's a common mistake most RVers find themselves in. Nice thick baggage doors. They're on these nice strut arms. They were replacing one of the strut arms a second ago, so it's nice to know that you know they're going through the units to make sure everything's in good mechanical working order. Here's your hydraulic system for the level up six point auto leveling. A little basket here there's already a fan included really nice slat wall here that you can put all sorts of utility baskets and storage on keeps things really nice and organized and this is often something that people add to their rvs later and it's not inexpensive to do it so it's cool that they already have it in place on redwoods you have a full water manifold system as well if you don't know the perks of that it basically gives you the ability to isolate any type of water related issues so you don't have to turn off all your water you can simply turn off the hot or cold valve that's being impacted you have your asa smart board here this is your in command system allows you to also pair your phone and control things from that touch panel on the inside your road vac your outside stereo and a bunch of light switches plus it's finished off in a very nice flooring and even the top portion is all finished off very nicely you have a 110 outlet out here outside of your water heater that's a magnetic hold for the door. Looking up, they put a little hanger up here. Not exactly sure what they were hanging from that, but I guess if you have a towel or something like that you want to hang, you'd be able to do that. The awning has been removed, so I'm assuming the awning is being repaired or it was damaged and uh, it's being replaced, or it may not even be replaced. That might be something that if you buy this unit pre-owned, you'd have to deal with. I'll ask them a little bit later. Sides of the slides are painted. And then all the graphics, everything else is vinyl graphic because this is not a full body paint unit. 
Looking under the slide, it has full rack and pinion slides all the way around. This rides on a 12 inch I-beam frame. You can see that the shackle hangers have also been reinforced both on the side and the bottom. And this is running Goodyear tires, okay. So you have the tires you wanna see. These are the G114 tires. Has a Moride LRE 4100 suspension system as well. A lot of good things to see underneath here from a, a suspension perspective. Coming around, all frameless windows. Again, these are dual pane windows, so they are uh, gonna be better in terms of preventing weather intrusion, heat and stuff like that from making it into the RV. Looking at the back, you have a receiver hitch as well as a plug so you can connect your trailer wire or your trailer lights. Very, very cool. All LED lights, full one piece fiberglass cap on the back. You have your Furion wireless prep there as well. Coming around this way, this is purchased through Explore. On the side, you have your gray tank for the kitchen, that's going to be for your sink. This is your outside hose, so you have a power retracting hose. At least you can keep your power hose stored in here. You don't have to find another place for it. You have your quick drain below here, which is essentially a valve, so you can drain out your freshwater tank if you want to. Another rack and pinion slide. I like how they kind of emboss this redwood decal on the side. This is a drop frame, so your drop frame section's right here, and they cover it up really nicely. You have your sewer connections down here, and I like how they mark it above, so you have clear indication of where they are. Again, 8,000 pound Dexter axles under this. Coming over here, you have the outside of your furnace. You have this French door style, little entry into the other side of your basement storage. One door specifically designed to kind of cover the wet bay area. You have your whole house water filtration system, your electric leveling control, outside shower, Nice Nautilus panel to keep everything clean. And then you have your two handles for your black tanks and then your gray tank right here. So this is gonna have twin black tanks. One is gonna be for that half bathroom off of the kitchen and the other one's gonna be for the, the main bathroom in the back of the RV, or sorry, the front of the RV where the bedroom is. Over here, you're likely gonna have 30 pound propane cans. It does look like you'd be able to fit a 40 pound can in, in here if you want, which would go up to about this level. Very nice. And it is wired for the side view Furion cameras as well. But I'd love to get your opinion on this unit. What do you guys think of this pre-owned unit? Again, it's marked to about $90,000, $89,999. Has an MSRP of you know well over $160,000. Guys, give me your opinion. Leave a comment below. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.